I'm Mary Kingsbury, director for the Potawatomi Community Health Representatives, um, better known as uh, CHRs. Uh, the CHR program has been in effect since 1970 for the Potawatomis. Um, when it first came into effect, I was serving on the Potawatomi Tribal Business Committee, and at that time, no one had any idea what a community health representative or CHR, what it was, what it, what the um, objective of the program was. So after resigning from the tribal committee, I took the position of community health representative for the tribe and went to training for four weeks at uh, Desert Willow Training Center. And uh, the training consists of mental health, environmental health, concepts of health and disease. Um, stop, Tom. <laughs> The objective of the CHR program is to elevate the health standards of the Indian people. And this is related to our training, whether it be mental, environmental, or physical health. Um, and at the time the program first came into being, uh, the Shawnee Service Unit, Shawnee Indian Health Clinic, uh, they were not even aware of what the program consisted of or how they would be working with community health representatives. And back in 1970, there were three of us that were trained. Uh, one from the Potawatomi, one from the Seminole, and one from the Sac and Fox. But since that time, there are now five Potawatomi CHRs and periodically these people are sent back for training. Uh, this is either advanced training, uh, specialized skills, and we have a geriatrics counselor. We have one that is interested in uh, the mental health field. We also have one that is interested in maternal child health care. In addition, we have one that is trained in uh, nutrition. What are some of the specific things that the CHR does? Well, there's a lot of misunderstanding about what a CHR does. They think that as a community health representative, all they do is transport. That was not the objective of the program to start with, which a community health representative found it a lot easier to transport than to actually be out doing what they were trained to do. Okay, the way we work, we make home visits. These home visits are very important because it's in the home is where the problem's at. And by making the home visit, all right, the person has, you gain their confidence, their trust, they know they can talk to you, they know that you're there. I mean, you're down on their level um, and they know that whatever is told to you that you're not going to, you know, go out here and be taking it down the road somewhere to the neighbor next door. Um, and this is where you pick up where you, and, and you get this in your training. Um, one of the, the most important things a community health representative has to learn to do and that's to listen instead of talking so much. And then once, I mean, they just tune in on what the problems are and also being very observant, okay? They can look around and, and just see what, you know, their, their environmental conditions are. And, um, okay, like if we see that, say there's a, a baby that's uh, having this, you know, the mother's had it to the doctor, it's had diarrhea, okay, and by being observant, okay, you can see that there's no screens on the windows or the screens are torn and that, you know, the flies, flies are in the home, you see flies on the baby's bottle, 
you say, and how, well, how are you going to tell a person, you know, that, all right, that maybe the reason the baby is sick is because due to the flies being in the home and not keeping, uh, how, you, how do you do that, all right? The mother may approach you and say, that, you know, let you know her child is sick and that it's having diarrhea, that it's having these problems, and then this, in a way, gives an opening for the community health representative to uh, let the mother know what the sanitary conditions can be to help prevent this type of sickness. Um, or I may, we may be working with some someone that has mental problems. And just by letting them talk and letting them know we care. We work a lot with geriatrics, our older senior citizens. Um, and this is where our geriatric specialist, our geriatrics counselor, I should say, she just excels in this. I mean, she's had training in uh, rehabilitative home health care, okay, and how to give these people therapy, um, people that have had strokes, how to work with heart patients, um, exercising them after they've had a stroke, how to, the geriatrics counselor also knows how to handle a patient, even though, say, maybe the patient weighs 200 pounds, I mean, she can safely handle this, this person without injury to herself or to the uh, client. Also, um, back in 1973, I'm backing up a little bit here, um, there were three of the Pottawatomie Community Health Representatives that were trained as EMTs. Um, You mean, okay, EMT, emergency medical technician. And at the time that we got this type of training, um, one of the CHRs had a heart patient in the car, but the CHR the community health representative was not aware, but they had a very strong feeling that this person was having a heart attack. All right, after that experience, it was then the need, and not only just that one, also going into the home and finding an elderly person in the middle of the winter in the floor, and the person had been there for two days. All right, this person was dying, but, and so the CHR, in turn, seeking help, um, emergency help, on the spot for that person. And the way the community health representatives got this emergency medical technician training was through the director at that time and utilizing the resources in the community, um, Shawnee Ambulance Service set up the training for us, coordinated the training for us, and uh, the doctors, the local doctors in, the, in Shawnee, took their time, donated their time, to come out and to give us this training, which is, um, our training was 72 hours. Um, I feel very fortunate that I, that I had the opportunity to watch the community health representative program grow, and not only for the Potawatomis, but for all the tribes. And another objective of ours is we, we work with the Potawatomis, Potawatomi people, but we also work with other tribes. Uh, I have received some very, some very, very good schooling from this program. And having even obtained some college credits from it, 
I would like to introduce to you my assistant, uh, Jonelle Nagonqua. Jonelle, will you come in? Starting in 1970, worked a year, about a year and a half, to June of 1971. At that time, resigned from the Community Health Representative Program and was gone about seven or eight months. The tribe then had another position open in uh, February of 72. I applied for it and uh, came back into the program and have been with it ever since. Okay. Thank you, Mary. As Mary said, I am the assistant of the CHR program for the Potawatomi tribe. And I just became assistant in March, and I've really enjoyed working with Mary in this capacity. I first came with the program two years ago in March, and it's been one of the most wonderful experiences that I've ever had. The training at Desert Willow was one I'll never forget, and I'm hoping that we have two girls now that on our staff that haven't had an opportunity for training, and I'm hoping that they'll soon be able to have this because it is an invaluable experience. But not only do the CHRs get training there, that's only their basic training. It only touches upon the things that they'll be doing back in their own areas. When you get back home, there is so much more that you in depth that you'll be doing with the things that they give you. And the you have additional training. It depends on what you, you know what you would like to do, where, what you would like to go into, and you can get training in that plus other training that you get on, uh, say, mental health, uh, nutrition, which I happen to be in, uh, management training. Uh, these different things like this helps the program. Your nutrition, how you hope to use that? Okay. Myself, as I said, I have uh, had nutrition training. And I'm hoping that in the future I'll have more training. I plan to use this in the community, working with other tribal programs, working with our tribal programs to improve the nutrition uh, benefits for other uh, peoples. There, there are so many people that really, even though they, some people have enough money for food and they still do not have the right, correct nutrition. And there are those who have very little but uh, with uh, education, with training, with information, they still can have good nutrition. Like working with the CHRs and other tribes, the mm -hmm. same nutrition. Mm -hmm. There are other uh, tribal CHR programs other than our own who have CHRs who are also interested in this, and I hope to be working with them and setting up different programs for the benefit of their people. In our community, I have to say that we are very fortunate that the resource people here uh, work very well with us and they're always so receptive and they uh, go out of their way to help us in any way they can. We've, we're very fortunate because I know that there are some areas that have a more difficult time with this than we do. We have a, a, a multipurpose center which services older adults. And this is uh, something that our tribe had uh, got funded through the Unit on Aging. And uh, we as CHRs spend part of our time down there in whatever capacity we can. For the majority of the time, they, they have people that work there that take care of it very well. But it does give us an opportunity to work uh, in the community in this manner. There are several of us that are on different committees. Uh, I myself am on the uh, board for the Indian Alcoholism Center here in Shawnee, which is very, has been very successful and we're, we're so proud of it for the good that it's done in the community and for our people. Uh, we have, as I said before, we have two, uh, well, three, actually three new CHRs, but one of them has had her training and, well, they're all wonderful. 
and uh, we have another one called uh, Lillian Lang and Marquita Rumsey. And I think that our program, I'm a little prejudiced, but I think our program has the best CHRs going. They're wonderful girls. And I'd like you to meet one of our new ones. Her name is Marquita Rumsey. My name is Dwight Cotton, and I'm with the Citizens Band, part of Waterman Indians of Oklahoma. My job title is Environmental Health, and uh, we have a maintenance program. That, uh, we have a grant to start it, and it's been underway for about a year now. It's a nonprofit organization for the Indians of Oklahoma in the Seven County area. Uh, the objective to the program is uh, to help lower income people to uh, through environmental health maintenance around the home. We have backhoe and uh, backhoe service. Uh, we have a tractor with box blade and brush hog that we uh, do. We have uh, also charge a minimum fee for these services. And uh, We uh, can we do this one more time? Or maybe I better. I feel that this program is uh, very important to the uh, Indians uh, and for low income people, as we said. Uh, you, uh, this program has to charge a minimum fee for these services, so it can be self-sustained in one year. Uh, we do some minor repair, carpentry work, plumbing. Uh, we do uh, well service, uh, septic tanks, drain fields, uh, things of this nature. We do a lot of brush hogging because uh, a lot of tall grass out in these rural areas that uh, tend to uh, have rodents and mosquitoes and flies and uh, other insects of this type creating an environmental health hazard. Uh, anyway. Received training uh, at Tucson, Arizona, at Desert Willow Training Center in uh, environmental health. Uh, studied uh, home safety, uh, rodents, uh, insects, uh, various kinds. Uh, just general about uh, environmental health program. I believe that ought to sum it up, unless anybody has any questions. So. <laughs> yeah. Right there. Right. our own shirt. Okay. Do I just start completely? Okay. I'm Marquita Ramsey, CHR for the Potawatomi Indians. I've uh, been a CHR for about four months. I haven't had my basic CHR training yet, but I feel like I've learned a lot from my daily CHR experiences. Uh, the last three months we've been focusing primarily on rabies control uh, around in this area, in the different towns in this area. We've had uh, several rabies clinics in uh, I feel like I've learned a lot from that. It was quite an experience for me to actually shoot an animal. And uh, I really am getting now to where I, I know more about it and really enjoy it more. As I said, I haven't been to my basic training yet, but the field that I find more interesting and the one that I enjoy the most is uh, the maternal child health area. Um, 
our objectives for the next three months is uh, primarily on the child child health area. Um, I've been working with the, in the county health department here in Shawnee to uh, set up child health clinics at the different schools in this area. I'll be uh, helping them to give physicals to the preschool children and uh, just helping them in general. And uh, I also plan to work with uh, several other resources in this area, such as the uh, county welfare department and also the public health nurse at the clinic, the Indian Health Service Clinic. Um, this is the field that I feel like I'll be more helpful in. I really enjoy working with children and also in the, the uh, maternal area. Can you cut it off now? Yeah. <coughs> okay. Now I'd like to introduce, is it on yet? Now I'd like to introduce another one of our CHRs, Lillian Lang. Thank you, Marquita. I've been with the program three and a half months, and coming into the program, I had no health background other than some volunteer work in county hospitals. So I was very honored to be taken into the program. I'm sure you've been told that our position as CHRs is primarily a link between health staff and Indian people. Uh, primarily, we are to promote health activities and induce participation. No programs are any good. You can have all the health programs in the world, and they're no good if the people do not participate. Our prime concern is health maintenance, whether it's environmental, physical, or mental. Um, I work as a generalist, and I will also go in to the mental health field. In the short time I've been with the program, we do not find that big an area, although people forget that even stress-induced disorders, which are not a very strong mental problem, people still need help, whether it's just confusion or not knowing what to do. The people accept us, and I think this is primarily because of the work that was done before people like myself came into the program and partly because the tribe, tribal officers have accepted us. I do hope that I see the day when we work ourselves out of a job because the big thing is health maintenance. Right now we help these people to keep well, to stay well, catch things early. Eventually I hope that they will all be able to do this themselves and there won't be a need for a community health representative. That's it. Okay. I'm Juanita Clifford, and I'm a Potawatomi Indian, and I work for the Potawatomi Tribe in the Community Health Representative Program. I'm a geriatrics counselor. I've had three weeks training at Rapid City as my, in my basic CHR training. And I've had a two weeks course in Tucson, Desert Willow, as rehabilitation of home health care. Huh? I've got into this program to work with senior citizens. Huh? And my, now I'm, I go into the home and I train and assist the family to care for our loved ones, which has got older. I do physical therapy and I exercise with the elderly and I towel bath. I work with the arthritic patients and the diabetics and I assist and counsel in nutrition. Especially I check their medication and I um, work with some if they have crutches, use crutches, and they're not adjusted right. Well, I'm trained to help adjust them. Huh? 
I work very closely with the, some older people that have to be taken to the clinic and I have to watch their medication very closely. I've got some of them that I'm real proud of that I have don't have to take them back to the doctor quite as often. First when I started working with them I had to take them every week, two weeks. Now I've got them where they're on a schedule about every three months which I think has made me feel better and it's improved their health. I have one that I work with very close that has some you know, just don't have to come back to the doctor quite as often. Huh? A lot of them, I just visit with them because they're lonely, older people. Huh? And just do little things that will make them feel better. Huh? And that's, I haven't been in the program but about four months. Huh? But I have thoroughly enjoyed it. Huh? And I really hope to continue on with it huh? till I am get to be a senior citizen. And that's about all. I shouldn't have said that. That's about all, should I? My name is Wallace Tyner. I'm superintendent of the Title X program. Our project under Title X is the restoration of a pecan grove. This is a native pecan grove, which we are hoping to clear and restore to productivity. It also includes the construction of some recreation facilities in the pecan grove. We are starting out, this project incidentally is some 60 acres in size. We have started on this project by clearing out the brush and the unwanted trees and we're using primarily uh, chainsaws and hand tools such as axes, bow saws, and uh, to uh, clear out these trees there are some 22 workers in the program. We have also used uh, other equipment, heavy duty equipment such as bulldozers and uh, back hose to remove the stumps that were left after the clearing operation. We realized we could do this much faster if we used a bulldozer all, all the way through except in using a bulldozer it is difficult to keep from disturbing the soil too much or tearing into the trees that we want to left that we want to remain after the clearing is finished so it's much easier to prevent damage to the pecan trees and uh, also not disturb the soil too much that we want to leave in place after the clearing is finished, we will start a program of pecan tree management, which will include the application of fertilizer, the spraying for insecticides, and hopefully a time for harvesting and gathering of the pecans. This takes several years, or at least two or three years, to bring a pecan grove into full productivity after work has been initiated. We have in some limited areas started the application of fertilizer and some insecticides and of course we'll do more as clearing progresses and we can get in with equipment to uh, take care of the trees. At this time of our clearing we are leaving all of the pecan tr trees in the grove despite the fact that they may be too thick for ideal uh, operation and productivity. But after we have a better idea of those pecan trees that we want to save, then of course we will clear again uh, with that 
idea in mind. <coughs> the uh, recreation facilities will be installed sometime later. They will consist primarily of picnic sites, tables and benches, and that sort of thing. There have, we have started uh, establishing a water supply for these picnic sites, and they will be connected up a little later on. Also, the same water source will provide irrigation water for the trees if needed. At this point, we are about 50 percent complete of the actual clearing. And, of course, there are stumps remaining in some of the cleared area that we will get out. But by the end of this current growing season, we hope we'll have enough accomplished so that the trees can be placed under a full management program. Come on. 